I don't like stereotypes. I wouldn't say I like it when society develops preconceived ideas or just simplistic images that negatively influence how they see or how they perceive a group of people. I don't like it. For example, Australian men tell bad jokes. It's not true that every Australian man tells bad jokes. For example, millennials are entitled and lazy. It's not true that all millennials are entitled and lazy. It's a stereotype. But some other stereotypes reflect a culture. That instead of dismissing their value or dismissing their dismissing them, we can see that there is some truth to it. There is some truth to them. For, for example, the tall poppy syndrome in Australia. You've heard of it. For some reason, <laughs> it has been observed that it's common in Australian culture to pull someone down to keep everybody on the same level. This, this behavior happens in politics, in business, in the church, in families, almost everywhere. If you are about to make some big progress, you'll see some people just talk down, like just try to pull you down. It, they don't know why, they just feel like we all have to be the same. I don't know where it came from. So I'm, I'm not an expert in those area, in those things, but I've seen it. I've experienced it. I hear it on TV. Uh, I hear it on, on, on the radio. I, I, it's almost everywhere in Australia. Americans are rebellious. Of course, you can see that in Americans. That they, they, they grow up in a society that teaches them to question everything. And rebel, when they see something they think is wrong, the issue is the idea of wrong depends on every, each one. Like, your idea of wrong is not my idea of wrong. That, that, that behavior has helped them to make progress, but also has put them in trouble. Because when I disagree with authority, in America, when you disagree with authority, they celebrate you when you act rebelliously. When you, <laughs> they celebrate rebellious behaviors. It's in the culture. Oh, the British are arrogant. <laughs> you, I, I feel like you just agree with me. No. <laughs> because your husband is British. <laughs> She disagrees with that. She's standing on behalf. You, you're acting American. You're being rebellious to authority. <laughs> they, they have this deep-seated, deep unconscious belief that the British are the basic state of human nature. English is the only language that is not a foreign language. How, how that? <laughs> How that? Every other language is foreign, uh, except English. <laughs> they believe the accent is English accent, and everybody has, has an accent. Africans have an accent. Asians have an accent. They don't have an accent. British, no, that's pure. The how God created the humans. <laughs> British. They f believe that their culture is the culture. And we all have some cultures. No, for them it's not a culture. It's just the way humans should be. British. <laughs> you see, this, this, I don't know where they come from, but it is just the way people behave and it's, it's strange. So while these behaviors may have some historical reasons, it's essential to understand that Satan can also influence a particular town, city, or region, or country with a sp specific issue or behavior. So I'm not saying that those things I've just mentioned are demonic. I'm saying Satan can inject himself in areas and create or influence a behavior 
or a culture. Spirits in charge of those tasks are called territorial spirit. Spirit that are in charge of areas and cultures and countries and regions, they are called territorial spirit. The Bible calls them principalities or powers or rulers or authorities. When you see that in the Bible, understand that the Bible is talking about spirit that control areas. Those spirits are sent to influence a particular area to behave in a certain way that goes against the plan of God. Their mission is to oppose the plan of God in a particular place. Let's read Daniel chapter 4, 7. This word is by decree of the watchers. And the decision is by command from the holy ones. This is so that the living will know that the most high is ruler over human kingdoms. He gives them to anyone he wants and sets the lowliest of people over them. Who are the watchers? Daniel, the book of Daniel is talking about. These are known as spirit beings established over geographical regions. They are watchers. They watch over geographic regions. They rule over regions, countries, cities, or towns, depending on their ranks. Daniel 10, 12 to 13. Don't be afraid, Daniel, he said to me. For from the first day that you purposed to understand and be humble yourself and to humble yourself before your God, your prayers were heard. I have come because of your prayers, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me after I had been left there with the kings of Persia. One angel is talking to Daniel. And he's telling Daniel, I was sent with an answer to you. An angel of God was sent to Daniel. But he was blocked by another angel. Watch this. An angel of God was sent and then he was blocked by another angel. He calls that angel Prince of Persia. We know that that was not a human being who was dealing with that angel. That was a spirit being. And then God sent another angel who was more powerful than the, 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 the angel who blocked the, 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 the first one to, op- to fight for him. So what happened? The angel who was sent by God was less powerful than the angel who opposed him. They have ranks. Even though he was sent from God, he was still less powerful than the angel of darkness who opposed him. And he took another more powerful angel to come and fight the angel who was blocking him. They have ranks. They have ranks. It's in the Bible. I'm not preaching a new theology. (laughs) You you saw it there. So I'm not bringing a new... I'm not even trying to interpret it in my way. No, it's just written there. A prince of Persia opposed me. So why didn't you fight him? You're coming from God. Why didn't you deal with it yourself? And then he says, but Michael came and fought for me. Ah, so Michael is more powerful than you. It's logic. It's there. These rulers and authorities are fallen spirits that were cast out of heaven with Satan and work with him to oppose God's redemptive plans. They are spirit beings, they have some powers, and they oppose God's redemptive plans over regions, countries, and towns. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. In the heavens doesn't mean where God is. It means in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm. There are forces that oppose each other. The kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness. 
Colossians 2, 15 says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them in him. Who are they? The rulers and authorities. Jesus was dealing with spirit beings. The kingdom of God is organized in ranks. And so is the kingdom of darkness. In any given city, region, country, or group, intelligent spiritual beings work to influence and control the attitudes and behavior of people. Oh, that's bad news. The good news is that the Holy Spirit is at work in every place. These powers operate through humans, human systems to control societies. They work through human systems. They don't only work in the spiritual world. They also take control of geographical areas. They control places, cities. Revelation chapter 2, 12 to 13. Write to the angel of the church of Pergamum. Thus says the one who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. Yet you are holding on to my name and did not deny your faith in me. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death among you, where Satan lives. Jesus is telling the, the church of Pergamum that where you are, Satan has taken control of that place to the point where he's, 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 it seems like that's where his throne is. He's giving command from your place to other places. He's not talking about hell. He's talking about hell because the servant was persecuted there and killed there, the servant of God. And he's talking to a church that is there. So the church can be in a place where Satan has his throne. And they will be persecuted. They will be, they will suffer because, not because people hate them, because Satan has taken control of the place. And the angel is telling the church of Pergamum, where you are, things are not good. Where you live, things are not good. Satan is in, in control of the system of that place. He controls the army. He controls the politicians. He controls the police. He controls everything. So now you are in trouble, my friend. But I'm glad because you have stayed faithful. God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. But God is not operating everywhere the same way. God is present everywhere, but he's not active everywhere the same way. Some places they give God less access than others. God is present everywhere, but not is not active everywhere. That is important to understand. In this particular place, God was not active as he was other places. Satan was more operational in that place more than God. And the Bible acknowledges it. Supernatural evil powers establish themselves in local cultures and control lives and system and customs. Satan establishes control over places and dire directs his powers of darkness against God's will. Like he will talk to the police to do something. He will talk to the army to do something. He will talk to the teachers to do something. He will talk to business people to do something. He will talk, and, and, and Satan will take control of that place. His central purpose is to pull down God from his throne in people's mind. He wants to take the throne of God in your mind. The battle is over worship. Satan wants to be worshipped. So he wants in our mind to see him as the king. And God wants to remain the king on his throne. But Satan wants to take that place. He started his plan with Adam and Eve. He continued throughout history. Worship has always been the center of the battle between God and Satan. He always introduces other gods through different shapes and forms to deviate human's ma human mind from the real God. He always tries to do that. For example, communist leaders, they believed that religion was incompatible with the advancement of humanity. 
They thought religion was the cause of delay, of, of setback. So they wanted to stop, to cancel completely religion. He's coming back. It's his coming back. North Korea is a closed country to the gospel. The leadership does not want their people to be exposed to the message of the Bible. Why? Satan has taken control through the system. The devil always tries to introduce different strategies. In some places he uses materialism. People worship things and wealth more than God. Just like people struggle with family issues, there are also geographical issues. Everybody from that village struggles with that thing. Everybody from that town has that issue. Have you heard of that? Geographical issues. In some villages, men struggle with infidelity and sometimes they laugh about it. They laugh about infidelity. I slept with that woman and I slept with that woman and I slept with that woman. <laughs> oh, what's funny about that? And they celebrate each other. It's not something to be happy about or proud about. Some people struggle with lack of education. You see villages where people don't study. And they, they stay under a particular level because God, Satan doesn't want them to be educated to understand the Bible. And other places... They study too much to the place where they reject God. They become their own God. Satan can use anything. He can use anything. So Johnny Inlow wrote a book called The Seven Mountain Prophecy, which I found fascinating. He explains how whoever controls one of these mountains controls the culture. So I want to share that with you. Satan knows this, and he fights to maintain control of these areas. So stay with me, church. The first one is family. Family. Family plays a fundamental role in shaping society. The values of a community are shaped by values of the families in that community. But if the enemy takes control of the concept of family, the whole society collapses because broken families produce broken communities. So the devil will always be after families. Men and women in this church, I want you to know the devil is after your family. He's after marriages. Because he knows once he destroys your family, he's destroying the actual community, when he destroys a, a families, he destroys a country. He's after that. The second thing he's after is education. Education shapes how society thinks. And therefore, it shapes how people behave. It's not... That all educated people think the same. People who went through the same education system think the same. That, does it make sense? All educated people don't believe the same things. But people who are educated in the same place, the same ideologies, they leave that place with the same kind of thinking. If the enemy takes control of the education system, he controls the future of the society. That's how the devil controls societies. The third one is government. Whoever controls the government controls the people. We all saw how much powerful or less powerful government can be. Oh, I don't want to go in that now because I, I don't want to divide the church now. We are all one. Huh? We are all one. We are all one. Let's stay one. When God is in control of the government, his plans advance. The enemy always tries to infiltrate government to influence decisions made by politicians. And once he's get, he got that, we are all in trouble. We are all under that power. There are things we did in the last few years just because the government said so. Everybody on the line. And if you oppose, you're in trouble. That's how much power 
the government is. Yes, sorry. My English is improving. <laughs> and the fourth one is media. The media mountain includes news sources like TV, radio, newspapers, and social media. We all know how much influence the media has over people. The media can shape narratives and shape how people perceive the truth. Like the media, you can call it a lie, but as long as the media is telling, is saying it's true, the majority of people will believe it's true. Ha. Huh. Satan wants to control the media too. He wants to. The fifth one is art and entertainment. Music, film, television, social media, and the performing art drive a society's cultural taste of values and standards, particularly its youth. Youth. They follow what they see. They follow what they see. They're celebrities, what they say. The makeup, the, the girls do the makeup according to the celebrity they see on TV, on social media. That's what they do. And I see videos of makeup. You know, girls, you know, girls, you put this one here, you put that one here. I can do that on my own. Don't need you to tell me how to do it. <laughs> Every girl wants to look like that girl there in that movie, in that TV show. And the boys the same. They follow the people they see. They inspire us. So they have so much power on us. It's not just boys and girls. Even adults, we fall under that trap of following. And it's not, it's, not, it's not bad. Every gift comes from the Lord. God gives them that power and they have influence over us and Satan infiltrates and starting to use them against the will of God. There's nothing wrong having celebrities. There's nothing wrong having artists. As long as we pray for them, that they will influence the people positively. Look, look for example, the way we perceive, the way we perceive sex and drugs and all those things in our society today depends on what celebrities tell us. Arts and, and film, movies, and, and even moral values. It starts slowly, like this is just okay, this is just okay, and then we, we move to that, or we accept it, it's just okay. And then it becomes normalized, you know? It's normal, and then it becomes legalized, okay? Now it's not just legalized, it becomes, if you don't do it, you are in trouble. It starts with the media, it ends with legislations in politics. I'm not talking politics, don't tell anyone I said this. They f thank you, thank you. It didn't get me. I love you, mate. I love you. I love you. <laughs> six, <laughs> six. <laughs> business, business. Business is the ability to create wealth. When the system is controlled by corruption and greed, the people suffer. We went to the shops with my son one day to buy chips, you know, these chips in package. And then he opens it and he says, what? It's empty. It was full of air, like it looks big. But when you open it, it's like not even half. Why do they do that? Why not just create a small package and just put it full? <laughs> Greed. You pay, your mind thinks you're buying a big stuff while you are really buying a small thing. It's full of air. God forgive whoever makes ch ch chips. <laughs> and the last one is religion. Every society believes in something. Every culture believes in something. Some people believe in many gods. Others believe in a god. And others believe in the absence of a god. It's also a belief. When you believe in the absence of a God, you believe in something. Your belief, your religion is belief in the absence of a God. 
Everybody believes in something. Those who believe in the absence of a God believes in a God called self. Men, human beings, humans are the God of themselves. We just appeared. Satan invades religion in many ways. He makes people believe in false gods with a license to sin. He said, no, no, you don't have any problem if you sin. Oh, he makes religion legalistic. If you sin, we don't want you here. You're a sinner. Both sides are wrong. In both cases, that's not God's plan. It's Satan's plan. He distorts religion by making too legalistic or too licensed. That's why Jesus came to launch the church. Jesus came to launch the church, which is not a religion, but a movement. Jesus came to launch the church. The Christian church is described in Greek as ecclesia. Literally translated the word ecclesia means governing body. This translation suggests that the church should have great influence in all other spheres that make up a society. In all other spheres. Disciples of Christ are called to influence all other spheres of life and bring God's kingdom there. For many years, Christians abandoned education. We say that Jesus is coming soon. No, Jesus did not tell the disciples not to study, not to work. No, he didn't say that. We abandoned media as the church. We left politics to other people. We left entertainment. Why don't we have Christian models? Because they dress naked? Oh, okay. Then we have left that business to ungodly people. We need Christian business people who can do proper modeling for clothes instead of just blaming it. I don't like modeling. They dress, they dress like, so what? They will continue to dress like that until a good person is there to change it. We need Christian athletes. We need Christian actors in movies. Hollywood is not for them. It's for us. We need to invade Hollywood. We need to go those places and have Christian producers and, and, TV and directors. Business people. Christian business people. And then family. Christianity should be the standard of family. Disciples of Christ should, should set the bar for what family should look like. Some Christians don't understand this. There are mountains that control our society. These things. There are mountains, education, business. There are mountains. The church is on a mission to bring God's kingdom to earth. We need to fight these this, this regional principalities. and They are controlling our societies. They are controlling our lives. They are controlling our future. It's time for the church to stand up and fight. We need this. We need Christian politicians. No, not Christian by name. I'm a Christian. And then you vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even understand what, what, what. since when a Christian behaved like this we need businesses managed by people who fear God we need university professors who know God that's how we will overcome evil not by running from it by facing it by facing it listen to this Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. God is always in the offensive position. Satan's forces are trying to interfere, but Jesus has already won the victory. He has. We do not originate victory. We do not and we cannot accomplish what has already taken place. 
We have the authority to lose and to bound because Jesus has done it for us. We do not originate victory. We've been given victory. We are on the winning side. No matter what, no matter what we see happening in our communities, happening in the media, happening on the social media, happening on TV, happening wherever, Jesus has won the victory. We are not defeated. We won't be defeated. We will not be defeated. The church should stand. So this is the three things I would like you to do as, as a Christian. First of all, identify areas of abnormality. Identify those areas where you think this thing is not common. It's not really, I don't think this is what God wanted for my village or from the country I came from or, 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 or the town I live in or the city I'm living or the country I'm living in. This is not normal. I think this is not the will of God for my city. Secondly, pray. Pray for God to, of the harvest to send workers in his harvest. What does that mean? So we used to think like workers in the harvest of God are simply pastors who go places and missionaries to go and preach the gospel. It has to change. Workers in his harvest are business, Christian business people who own businesses. Teachers, Christian professors in universities, those are workers in his harvest. We need influencers on social media, Christian influencers who will still do makeup but Christian ones. Who will, who will still do, inf will still influence our young, our young children but on a positive way. Sometimes you see influencers on social media all talking about one thing. You are, what, what, did they coordinate this? But that thing is not really true. But everybody's talking about it as if it was coordinated. Everywhere you go, you hear about it. Everywhere our children hear the same thing. And tomorrow you start having arguments with them on that thing. We need godly entertainers, artists, and godly religious leaders. More import importantly, we need godly parent. Continue to pray until change happens by taking authority over the spirit behind the issues. Spiritual beings controlling our areas need to be defeated. Your mission is to go in the world and change it. Not to join it. Change it. Change it. And that's the last point. Take action. Where action is needed, we need to take action. Don't just complain about the failure of our education system. Pray for godly teachers or study to become a teacher. Next time you see ungodly activities in an area, take your time to blame the people. Take your time before you do it. Consider also the spiritual side of things. So I want to land here. Whatever you see dysfunctional in our society today is a spiritual battle. We need to stop blaming people. Blame the devil. It's not their fault. People are captive. People are captive. Our communities are captive because the devil has taken control of it. They are spirit beings controlling things. It's time for the church to pray. Time for the church to fight back. Not by posting crazy and weird stuff on social media. By prayer. Sometimes I see posts on social media and I ask myself, this is not helping us to move forward even a centimeter. You're just causing confusion by posting this. You can be against it. You can be for it. This is not how we will fight this battle. We are more than conquerors. These spirit beings, these territorial spirits are not, are not powerful than our Jesus. They are not. They are not.